like what do you think is the role of the artist and what do you think of the is the role of the content creator if if any both they're both the same now because none of this shit matters because none of us can change any of the shit and we're all gonna die i hate nihilism um, this is why i hate nihilists guys <laughs> I hate it. No, I'm 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 slightly joking around. Yeah, yeah. But I will say, um, I used to view the role of the artist as um, like a healer, and mm. I think that the role of an artist should still be a healer in case the world can get better. But in case the world can't get better, I think it's very important to accept that maybe our purpose is to just make people comfortable while we all die. And in that instance, the role of the content creator and the artist is all of the same because that was just a pretentious construct in our mind to differentiate ourselves from others the whole time. We're all mm-hmm. here to help people be less lonely. We're all here to prevent suicide. We're all here to give people companionship. And I don't know if I'm seen. preventing suicide. I'm kidding. <laughs> You're encouraging. <laughs> I'm now encouraging suicide. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Maybe I'm not. But no, no I'm kidding. <laughs> No, that's the role. And and that's the point where it's like when you get out of your snobby art school, this is good art, whatever, fuck that shit. Like we're we're on a dying planet and billionaires are going to space and they don't give a fuck about us. So the role of an artist and a content creator are the exact same. Just try to get people through the day. Try to help people feel seen. Take your fucking money and give it back to people. <laughs> by the way, can we like that's the that, by the way, that's the whole thing. <laughs> Like, you make a huge surplus of money when you're a successful artist or content creator. Mm -hmm. Give it away. Maybe set a boundary for yourself. This is the amount of money I'm going to make, and I'm going to keep working hard and pushing myself to the limit, but none of this money is going to be for me anymore. Give it to a mutual aid fund. Give it away. I don't know. Just don't keep it. That's really stupid. Don't keep increasing your budget. Like, you don't need your music videos to get more and more expensive like the best artists in the world right now are literally just making shit in their room and it's like changing the entire yeah like that's not what good art is you don't need more money to make good art you need to get more emotionally potent so when you make more money as an artist give more and more of it away don't scale don't increase your budgets don't try to get more fans Mm. give more and more of your money away Mm. and serve the fans that you already have better and better and Whether we live or whether we die, whether climate change kills us, whether we're able to fix it, we still need to be doing the same things right now. You know, you still need to be sharing new ideas, breaking mediums, making people less lonely. It's simple shit. And actually the distinction between art and content is some really pretentious thing that we just came up with in our heads. How dare you? It's true. It's not I'm no better. I spend years on MP3 files and I am no better than a girl doing a Fenty unboxing video on YouTube. I am no better. No, no it's not about what's better or not, but it's about acknowledging. Like this feels very like, there's no race, we're all one (laughs) No, we're not all one human race. I'm black, you're white. Yeah, We're our, different. our experiences are different, and that's fine. but I'm not better than the girl yeah, doing yeah, boxing yeah. video on her makeup channel. Just because what I make wave files that well, no, but I think I like. think it's fine to say that like Erica Badu is better than Kim Kardashian as far as the impact she has on the world. No, but Kim Kardashian has a net negative impact on humanity. Sure. Erica Badu has a net positive impact, and the difference is the intent and intersection of capitalism i get that i think that's fine I like think i think it's fine to admit that it's like, like all of this representation some shit. people are better than others <laughs> like it's okay it's it's okay that's that's genuinely how i feel that's genuinely how i feel even if that's true that is not the right thing to focus on right now like that i think it is because i think we should be getting rid like i genuine like i just think it's a bit too like ideological to be like all of us are equal, all art is equal, all content is equal. No, some content is violent and harmful, some art is yeah. violent. Like, and I don't think there's anything pretentious about like having standards for humanity. Like, we should have standards for society. Sure, just, just walk the talk. Like, if, like, don't... Society gains nothing from shitting on Kim Kardashian because she has an algorithmically driven career where both positive and negative feedback advances her. So just be anti Kim Kardashian. Just don't don't say anything about Kim Kardashian. Oh yeah, absolutely. Just be 
what just you want to be. Yeah, well, just unfollow her and just yeah. and just be counter counter influence. You know, like, yeah. like if she's yeah, influencing absolutely. women to have body dysmorphia and to think that money is the only thing that makes them happy and to just find the richest black man and, and like that then be the opposite of that yeah just and and that's the the biggest thing of, of why i think silence is so important is because i don't ever say anything negative i hate most of these niggas but i don't say anything about them because yeah. i haven't figured out how to be the better version of them yet no so i, when, I agree until with that i too. figure out how to be better i have nothing to say no, I, I actually, I respect that and like definitely agree with that. Especially to the extent that like most of the negative shit you say about people publicly like really drives them to suicide. Yeah. And I'm like, there was a time when everyone kept asking me and Flex to comment on like the slum flower and Florence Given thing. And I was like, yeah, I don't want I don't need, yeah, I don't, I don't want to be responsible for like, Florence Given killing herself like the slum flower killing you know like which is another conversation about art that I think needs to be had is like we need to hold fans accountable for the damage they do to art what's really funny well I don't you don't want to get me started on that <laughs> like we but, need um, to hold so really many funny, artists have killed themselves because of their stupid ass fans it's like, really funny it's like first world problems used to be like uh like the jet is so far from the limo, and now it's like I am entombed in a chamber of my own self-reflection, <laughs> and people are telling me to kill myself. And no matter what I do, like I, I'm yeah. actually gaining a little bit of empathy for first world problems because it's actually no, something same. we all go through with yeah. the internet. Yeah, like we're all just like trapped in this weird funhouse mirror where like we're damned <laughs> if we do, we're damned yeah. if we don't. Yeah. It's super meta. It's super. We haven't even described it yet, but like I have empathy towards that because i also think there's like an eighth grade girl going through that as yeah, well no, it's absolutely. like we've everyone sort of has like f-list celebrity status yeah, at this point we're yeah. all going through the same emotions so i have a lot of empathy towards that and like i, ne I being publicly mean is because the thing yeah, about being publicly mean i used to do that shit but i'm like that was that's the corny uh, shit that was, in the world. yeah that was some really dumb corny you deserve shit, to hate like, people and you deserve to feel better than people but you don't deserve should, to say that publicly yeah. and if you were really better than them you would have channeled that into something yeah and i don't want to pretend i'm not someone that doesn't gossip but i like to gossip privately because like does anyone also who the fuck does anyone need to know what i think of them another thing that i hate is like and this goes back to like um, the fact that I I like to position, or at least I try to position myself as like I'm not above or superior to anyone. Like I'm not like this perfect person whose life is together. But that also means that like a lot of people feel entitled to my digital space. I don't believe in safe spaces. I don't believe in inclusivity. No one is no one is safe. There's no safe because to a safe space implies that like your every need must be catered to all the time. And like what level of solipsism is that? Yeah. That I don't I don't message the slum flower to be like, you need to be more inclusive of me as an immigrant black woman. <laughs> no. Who the fuck am I? Another downside of the division between the blurred lines between content and artist is like everyone everyone feels entitled to content because it has no intention so mm. no one respects it like no one but that's that's the energy you put and by the way like i think that's i think people do that that particular person probably loves you i feel like i have a very unique experience as like a african black immigrant in America, yeah, and you're who only has ever like trauma, or whatever. Yeah. yeah, and it's like I don't feel included in anyone's spaces, but I also don't feel like anyone has to include me. Like it's, what kind of narcissist would I be to demand that someone create a safe space for me? Who am I? Why do I need a Here's safe? Here's a question, space? and I'm not like, dragging you. I'm yeah. not. Do you feel? like maybe people watching you critique other people for not including your intersections created a standard for them to then do that to you 
But I don't think I. So that, has, my has point the, is that like I don't. Actually, and I, I don't. For, but do you think you've ever like critiqued a white man for being like, well, this is just a white man's version of this thing, and this doesn't speak to my experience as a black woman at all, and that's why I hate this thing. I don't expect Joe Rogan to cater to my black woman immigrant yeah. experience, and I don't think Joe Rogan has a moral responsibility to make his podcast a safe space for me. Absolutely. Like, but. But yeah. when Spotify only gives a $250 million platform to one person. And I think that's another thing that, that may be hard for you to... Or it's like, maybe to someone who's in a very different... I don't want to say more oppressed position, but a very different position with lesser of a platform. Maybe they're viewing you like Joe Rogan, you know? Like, like maybe. There's no way. Like, but the case, I'm like, a broke I must say, like, by the way, I have, the I have problems with someone like Joe Rogan saying that young men shouldn't take the vaccine because you are now the platform for medical discussion amongst men. Yeah, So yeah. I, and I feel, it, that's our fault that we elected a mediocre yeah. white male comedian mm. that refs UFC fights yeah. to become Dr. Fauci. But we did. So, but now I got to help police that platform because like people's lives are on the line but that's this is this again so maybe that person feels that way like, about you where maybe if they feel like your non-inclusivity not because you don't want to include them because you were just literally talking I don't about have your the range. experience but joe rogan but doesn't like, have the range to not be a fucking idiot no but like the the, the difference is that joe rogan is giving medical advice as a white man who talks shit into his microphone I am a random black bitch on the internet talking about my random black bitch life. Yeah. I never claimed to be a doctor. Yeah. It's very irrational. I'm just, what you, I'm saying is like, I am minding though, right? my business in minding my Minding your business is violence to oppress people. Oh, interesting. This is what, a take I want to no, hear. No, like, it's, it sucks. I want to hear this The take. world has actually become so oppressive. Yeah. And like fascism has become so advanced that minding your business is a centrist take. Ooh. So like to mind your business is to enable fascism in an age of fascism. So like in an age when but, like okay, but what programs is the alternative? For, no, but I'm sorry, but like in an age where like programs people are like being cut. Yeah. To say like, yo, I got love for you, but I'm minding my business. That's kind of crazy. No, I, I actually agree. I love that take because now I'm spiraling and I agree with you. But it's, what can if, you expect if, that from me? By the way, what if Jeff, Who am I? What if Jeff said that to you? What where he's mean? just like talking about like going to space. Or, by the way, it's the same thing. So like yeah. <laughs> when I shit on Jeff for going to space after yeah. not letting his workers unionize. And then, but Jeff has never particularly done anything like wrong to me or whatever. But he is yeah. like perpetuating the system of capitalism. And if Jeff was like, bro, like mind your business, my nigga. Like this is, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about billionaires with rocket ships. Can you please mind your business? No, but the system that you were able to build your rocket ship on is, and you telling me to mind my business is you telling me to shut the fuck up while I die. I get that. And that's a really good point. But like, can it be me? My question is, can it be me? What do you, what do you mean by that? As in, like, I'm also a poor black woman. Okay, I'm not poor. But I'm a broke black bitch on the internet talking about my broke black bitch experience. And I don't know. I don't have the range. Like, I no. don't. I think my point is that, like, people deserve spaces that cater to them. Yeah. But owned, it can't come owned from by me. Them, by yeah, them. owned by them. I would love to help them, but I can't. It can't be my space. You know what Absolutely. I mean? It can't be like. Absolutely. Here's and by the me. way, like I, I think you do that. Like you, you, and you. Like use- if a trans woman was like, "Hey, I'm trying to build an audience, and like you have a bit bigger audience than me, yeah. and like, can you shout me out?" Of course I will. But that's but what can I like. be the one to that manage was- your space? Yeah. I can't, I can't do that. I don't have the range. I by don't way, have I, like you know what way, I mean. I, so it, yeah. that's it's more violent for me to be like I'm qualified to speak on how trans people are affected by the med- the med- I'm not qualified because who am I? But like, by the who way, am I? so and by, like I, it's interesting because like I'll catch myself in my own privilege sometimes by yeah. realizing that what I'm saying to other people is the thing that frustrates me when like white people say it to me. 
So like mm. in that instance, that is what that person wanted to say. They wanted to they they were just expressing this thing of like, oh man, like I really love the way your brain works and I'm clearly a very big fan of your platform. Yeah. And what they wanted to say was like I wish that there was something like this for me. Mm. And the problem is how many times have white people told me like well, I don't like the way you're asking for something. Or and it's like But that's not wait, even wait, wait, what wait, I'm saying. My point. Like yeah. I know that's not what you're saying. Yeah. But like the emotionally intelligent thing to do, I think, would realize, like, hmm, well, that's kind of, like, a nasty, irrational thing for someone to say to me. Yeah. But let me think about, like, what, from? yeah, what's yeah. at the root of that. Yeah. And that is what's at the root of that. And, like, I'm so tired of, like, centrist Democrats talking to me. Like, when I say, like, fuck the police, and they're like, well, that's, what does that have to do with me? Or, like, like no, well, that's coming from a place where I've been redlined and Jim yeah. Crowed and enslaved. And so it's like, yeah, I'm not gonna have the best attitude right now. Yeah. I'm gonna be a little irrational. I'm gonna be yeah. a little shitty. I'm gonna maybe talk about shit that's none of my business because I'm desperately trying to create my own business. Yeah, yeah. I don't have my own, bi- like, so I, 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 but. So it's funny cause something similar happened. We used to have a Bobo and Flex Facebook group, but then shut it down cause it was just, trash it was just a dumpster fire and when i made the announcement that like we're shutting this group down because it sucks there was a white woman who was like okay i'm gonna make another bobo and flex group and then like black people came for her and were like how dare you colonize a black woman's two black women's face personally i didn't give a fuck like please make another group like by all means please but a lot of black people were offended and were like, how dare you have the audacity to create a space on behalf of two black women as a white woman? This is so problematic. This is colonialism. You're a colonizer. And then she deleted it. She was like, okay, I'm not doing it. Sorry, guys, I'm not doing it anymore. And it's like... Yo, we gotta stop using colonization. Like, like, we're gonna stop. We're gonna, like, reduce how seriously we take, like, real... No, literally. Actual colonize... Like, the United States still owns Guam. Like, can we talk about, like, actual colonization? What was also hilarious about about that was, like... There were, like, a bunch of black girls that were, like, you need to now pay us for the emotional labor of having to explain to you, like, why this is wrong. And that... And I'm like, can you guys pay me? Like, can you pay me in flex, if anything? Like, I hate to, I, and like, I hate but to. But like, it gets ridiculous. It no. gets, I don't give a fuck if a white girl wants to start a bobo in flex. Like, I don't care. Like, do what you want to do. But I also see how, I guess, like if black girls are going to be offended by that, then okay. Like, and that's why I would rather just not. I see how other people are I see I see how this white woman who like clearly had she just had pure intentions and was dragged and I'm like I don't need to do I need that too do I also need that you know I think the okay like I don't want to turn this into like a cancel culture thing yeah because like I think that word is too divisive to people but it's important to note that like we will be judged at the end of the day by how much we were able to help groups more marginalized than us Mm, yeah but i now think that we've created an environment where that's impossible and you niggas are being silly like like like, no like that's silly to like like what are you doing for your people and people more oppressed than you by shitting on a white girl for starting a facebook literally no no no, it's like like, what did that achieve fam to truly decolonize these spaces will be to decolonize the effects that these white men's algorithms have had on us which were the fire like it's like cancel culture and woke all this shit like comes from a very pure place it it comes from like the marginalized fighting back against oppression and there's so much legitimacy to things people say even things that i disagree with because i'm a straight man yeah so like i accept that like there are going to be things that sound silly to me that i'm just wrong about and that's why i shut the fuck up about certain things yeah but in that i just want people to keep in mind that like 
this culture was facilitated by white men algorithms. Mm. The algorithm that in that that took over that Facebook group were like conflict and high comment engagement. Yeah, high, that yeah. is colonization. Mm. Like your instinct to tell this white girl that she's colonizing this space was a colonized mm, thought. Yeah, yeah. It is an yeah. algorithm that yeah. a black woman did not write. Yeah. That is for well, that is influencing you to think about how, like I mean, you get what I'm trying to say. Yeah, like, yeah. It's hard and it's and it's hard to decipher and I'm not the one to talk about it. Yeah. But in after I shut the, my last thing that I would like to do before I shut the fuck up on things that I have no business talking about <laughs> is just think about the way that these white men have colonized your mind everything before yeah. you try to decolonize more space. That that would yeah. be my and that's actually my only commentary on like cancel, cancel culture. culture because I think a lot of it is legit. But if you guys don't keep that in mind you will perpetuate white supremacy in everything you do yeah because mark yeah. benefits from that what something that i find actually really interesting about cancel culture is people getting mad at people on behalf of other people but so that's like algorithmic the, yeah you like the amount of they times the like a black girl is mad at a white girl for doing something in relation to like my podcast and is, i don't care that is an extreme i don't i me as the person who hosts this part, I don't care that this white that, girl, I'm unbothered, but you're bothered on my behalf that isn't bothered. Like That is colonization. And now yeah. you're like benefiting. Now she's, now she's Venmoing you for being mad about some shit that has to do with me that I'm not mad about. Like, I, I don't, what I, is happening? It's, you, no, you can, what's happening? Like, you can speak to the actual nuances of that situation as someone who this is none of my business looking from yeah. an outside perspective i'm just like we are fucked no truly we are because like we truly are notice how this whole situation like no one is donating to like homeless shelters for black <laughs> yeah literally because Niggas you're debating just, yeah like you're people just debating about condos, you like 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 the biggest oversight of defending marginalized groups online ends up being the marginalized groups. yeah, yeah especially yeah. with like even even like the way and I, I don't even want to speak to the specific thing so I'll keep it vague but like when it comes to marginalized groups that specifically struggle with like houselessness and feeding themselves and opportunities yeah but the conversation around those view groups become like technical things whether it be like terms or whatever but like that is what you focus on yeah as opposed to like their material conditions no literally that literally. is the darkest thing ever because like all of that other stuff is important too but no can one can tell me that that's not more important than the fact that they're homeless yeah no one can tell me that that's not more important than the fact that they're forced into sex work yeah no one can t like but now like that part of it is what's on the world stage yeah instead of the horror of their material conditions which is like i i struggle with becoming one of those like marxists who doesn't care about any race or gender issues because i'm yeah. so focused on class but like the internet is driving me to a point knowing that like all functions of like liberal infighting is algorithmically driven and making Silicon Valley more and more money every year. Mm. It's hard to not just go there. Yeah. Because like yeah. this is this is per this is mm, they love it. They eat it up. This is why they get such big bonuses at the end of the mm. year. Because you're arguing in a Facebook group, algorithmically driven, <laughs> in a way that won't help your people at all. What could be wow. better for Mark Zuckerberg? Yeah. 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 I don't know. No, I, I, it's it's, it's no, it's wild. And there's a way to say that without being dismissive. Maybe I didn't accomplish that, but like, guys, you gotta keep your eye on the fucking ball. No, but that's why at this point it's like we've now reached a point because of neoliberalism and yeah. like hyper policing of everyone's platforms that we can't help anyone. There's like, also, I mean, when you really like lock into what people are calling class consciousness which i'm very happy people are reaching you just realize that like the whole game of identity politics only benefits 
the people in those intersections that already had privilege. Yeah. Because yeah. what happens is when corporations get obsessed with playing the identity politics, the only black women or trans women or whoever get opportunities are the people that are in arm's reach of the white men in charge of our entire reality. Yeah. So yeah. like, yeah. unless you are a trans woman or a black woman or whatever that is in arm's reach of a white man in charge of a corporation, you're not going to benefit from this fucking representation. Yeah. 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 You're not going to benefit. So like, think about who you're helping and the people who this whole game has helped are the people who didn't need the help anyway. It's the homeless trans woman who needs the help. It's the black woman who has no industry connections that needs the help. That's not who came out of this better. The only, and like, that's why actual class revolution would be the only thing that actually helps people because like the whole woke identity politics identity policing game has not helped to its promise we've been doing this for 10 years now. yeah and we've moved not- and whose material well, and, conditions are better in that in that case who do it's really funny because like i had this conversation with a friend of mine um who's he's basically he has a huge platform you have like 70 million followers and we were talking about whether or not he should speak on the Israel-Palestine conflict. And he was like, I don't know, like, as a white man, I don't know if that's any of my business. And I'm like, hmm, that's, so whose business is it? And he's like, I don't, it's just not, as a white person, it's simply not mine. And that's when I actually realized that, like, we're done. This is the end of the world. Yeah. No one will ever help anyone. Because it's like, if it's anyone, you, who makes a hundred million dollars a year, like, is it not your business? How is, how is that not? No, you to, are the only person who, if you are you're su- one of the few people. If you're successful in America and pay taxes in America, you are funding genocide. How is that not your business? Yeah, like, like it's I don't, just, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get that at all. But because of neoliberalism and PC identity, culture, yeah, identity yeah. politics... It's now illegal for a white man to speak on some shit that isn't white man business. Yeah. Because then he'll get canceled. So now no. Well, the I don't know. By the way, like if, if you actually aren't articulate enough to express something that is worth expressing when it comes to Israel Palestine, I get why you might not want to use that. But what platform. is there to be articulate? Just but say give money. I, I don't know. I don't know. Like free I don't. Palestine. Fuck white supremacy. That's all you needed to say. Free. Palestine, but that, that wouldn't work. my nigga. That's, that, that would Why do, it's so simple. Because, I hate like okay. it's actually just not complicated okay. and people Here's are always why. like, oh, it's so complicated. No. It's more complicated than that because the medium is the problem. That yeah. particular person is following that would make the world the worst place for them to say exactly that. Why? Because, because, okay, it's something sort of we were talking about the other day, but like when the medium for political discussion becomes Instagram captions and Twitter, Trump becomes president. Facts. When the yeah. medium for discussing uh, something as like historically complex as Israel-Palestine becomes whatever, then like people just get radicalized more in both directions. So like, is it fuck white supremacy? Is it free Palestine? Yes. But Every would day. that particular message make that better on that platform no because the actual medium to have that discussion is long form right saying fuck israel free palestine that's only going to make it worse what will make it better is let's have an hour-long conversation about how this settler colonial state is committing a genocide and that's caused by a trauma caused by the genocide of their people and what we actually have to address is the idea of genocide and ethnic cleansing and ethno states and settler colonialism and oh shit maybe people are scared to talk about settler colonialism because they're also doing settler colonialism Maybe the U.S. is funding Israel because if they don't, people will start looking at like, oh, well, this is also a settler. Like, but it's a long form conversation. 
there is no responsible Instagram caption about Israel Palestine. Interesting. And the more we try to condense what needs to be long form conversations into Instagram captions, the more Trumps there will be. The well, more the problem Netanyahu's is, there will is be, that the more fascism there no will be. No one reads the newspaper or books. Don't so care. It has Make to it, be on Instagram caption. No, no, but if no, the only place. Then we're all going to die. No, then we're all going to die. If the only place that people read then political we're all theory going is to on die. Instagram. Then we're all, and by the way, that's not because like there are 10 second TikToks that imply the feeling of a lot but like whatever it could be visual it could be but i just know that when tweets became the medium for socio-political discussion fascism rose yeah so like absolutely i we don't accept the medium it's back to our point about art and content you have to break the medium if you want to save the world like the medium is the pro there is no caption that person could have wrote you would have to have an hour-long conversation about yeah. all the intifadas about how sure there were indigenous jewish people to that area but the actual settlement of israel is a white supremacist okay settler, i have a colonial question. state like we were both watching jay balvin's documentary and it was very interesting because the premise of the documentary is what do artists owe their communities? And if you're listening to this right now, you should go watch the documentary. It's on Amazon, by the way. It's it's, okay, it's on Amazon Prime. No, we're watching communist documentaries on Jeff's platform. That's when Jeff won, by the Jeff way. Jeff won, yeah. You can get the, the cheapest place to buy the communist manifesto is on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, no, Jeff has, won, Jeff has won. Yeah. Um, so you should go watch the documentary but essentially it's jay balvin who i guess is one of the biggest stars in the world right now yeah and just the most famous person to ever other than pablo escobar he's the most famous colombian of all time yeah so he goes to colombia to put on this huge huge concert and when he gets there he realizes there's a marxist revolution going on it's been going on for like years but yeah, yeah but i guess he didn't know i guess it because just, it's rich been getting people more, don't yeah, really it's, be knowing it's been getting anyway worse worse. so jay balvin this huge pop star goes to colombia realizes oh shit there's a marxist revolution going on in my country where i'm supposed to be putting on a concert in a couple of days and people start you know talking shit about just being like why haven't you said anything how are you gonna just come here and put on a concert like people are dying people don't have health care people we just want basic education health care like you claim to be the king of colombia but like the prince of Col- what what the did boy they call from it? yeah you claim to be all these things to be about your city but like you won't say anything you won't and it really made me like what is the and i think like so his response to all that was like i'm a singer i literally make mp3 files and you guys are expecting me to do political commentary on a marxist revolution i don't know and his whole thing was like you know i'm damned if i do i'm damned if i don't which is how clearly a lot of artists feel where it's like i didn't sign up to be a politician now i'm being forced to comment on politics and This goes back to my point of like, J Balvin should have then said he signed up to be a content creator because when you sign up to be an artist, you in a world where politicians... Artist has a responsibility to the truth. Yeah, in a world where politicians are literally the supervillains, it is unfortunately the role of the artist to reflect the time. By the way, I've never liked this whole... Well, I'm a I'm a singer or what I used to feel like that, but I also like the more I learn about history and am in touch with the current state of humanity, the better the art gets. So like I and I don't really get mm. that anymore. Cuz even if you're just making silly little pop songs, you'll make better silly little pop songs if you understand <laughs> yeah. how if you people live in are reality suffering and like how you want to relieve that suffering. But that goes back to my point from earlier on of like well, now he's a, he's one of the richest people in South America, sure. in the world. Of course he's detached from the Marxist revolution that's going... Like, what can he... So that's, your, your that's, question is, like, that's what is the paradox. Well, the pa- my question is, like, in light of the paradox of being an artist under capitalism, where the more popular you get, the more detached you become from your community, 
which means the more detached you become from the artistic process. What, what can we even expect from an artist? Thank you for listening to the first half of this conversation. If you're interested in listening to the rest of this conversation, you will find it on Patreon. So please support my Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash Bobo's Void or you can just click on the link in the description box below. If you enjoyed this conversation, I'll be having so many more of these types of conversation with different friends, with different strangers, with all types of interesting people and sometimes just conversing with myself. If you are interested in philosophy, politics, race, all the things, I'll be hosting all the conversations on my Patreon. So patreon.com slash Bobo's Void or just click on the description box below and support me. Thank you.